Hello, I wanted to say thank you um, for allowing me to take a few moments to tell you a little bit about why I am so excited to talk to you during the launch of the Greater Washington Employee Ownership Center. If I haven't met you before, my name is Kate Merrant. I am part of the DC Department of Small and Local Business Development. I'm the program manager for the Innovation and Equitable Development Team. And I am so excited about this launch and I'm very sorry that I can't be here today in person. But I have been working with both Jennifer and Harold um, on various initiatives related to cooperatives for over five years. So I'm gonna tell a little bit of a story and then I wanna talk a little bit about why cooperatives are so important. And then I wanna talk a little bit about how DSLBD can support employee owned cooperatives, other cooperatives and other types of small businesses. So when I first started um, with district government and at the Department of Small and Local Business Development about five years ago, one of the very first people that I met was Jennifer Bryant. Jennifer said, co-ops are incredibly important. They have a rich history here in DC and we need to see them back on the agenda. And I really believed in everything that Jennifer was saying. And shortly thereafter, I was asked by the deputy mayor's office to help lead a three month stakeholders group thinking about how we can better support cooperatives in the district. I was seeking community partners and very quickly Harold Pettigrew from the Washington Area Community Investment Fund said that Wake Up would really like to partner on this initiative. What would happen then was amazing. There were a group of stakeholders in the district who've been working towards cooperatives and supporting the cooperative ecosystem for a long time. Some of them who knew each other, some of them who hadn't met each other before. And three months became six months, became nine months, became two years. And so for two years, we held monthly stakeholder groups talking to people who wanted to support the cooperative ecosystem. And then when DSLBD got really busy and had to pull me back from that work, we found that the people who were doing this were so committed, they continued this work for an additional two years and beyond. And some of those people are Jennifer and some of those people are people all across the district who support cooperatives in all of their forms. And so this has been a long-standing build. What became even more exciting was in about year four, um, we got an opportunity here in the district to join a national fellowship with the National League of Cities and the Democracy at Work Institute to think about how we could support worker cooperatives in DC. And I was very happy to be part of that fellowship along with Oda Bacchus from the DC Food Policy Council so that we could explore how cooperatives could help support the development of small food businesses in DC, but specifically in areas of DC that have low access to healthy food. As part of that fellowship, we were asked to bring in a community partner. And it was so obvious that we wanted to bring in Jennifer who had already joined WAKEF at that point to start the Employee Ownership Initiative to think about how WAKEF could be an institution that would be supporting cooperative development here across the district. Through that, we got to work with others all across the country who are working on building cooperatives and cooperative ecosystems in their cities with a high focus on worker cooperatives. And we've had the opportunity to provide trainings to be able to um, connect people directly with technical assistance, whether they think about building a new cooperative or whether they think about converting a business that already exists into a worker-owned cooperative. I wanna say a little bit about why cooperatives are so important. So I grew up in rural America, cooperatives were very normal. I grew up on a dairy farm, and so we had cooperatives that we used to sell our milk, that we used to buy our feed. Cooperatives were everywhere. I was part of the state's cooperative extension network, which came out of Cornell University. And so when I moved to DC, I was surprised that I didn't see as many cooperatives because cooperatives were just a normal part of the economy and the ecosystem that I was part of. And one of the things that I learned from Jennifer, and, and she can really help explain a lot of this, is the rich history that DC does have on cooperatives. The District of Columbia has had cooperatives for a very long time in a lot of different ways. At different times, they have been more or less supported. Sometimes there were federal interventions to actually make it harder to run cooperatives in cities, but there has been a cooperative spirit and a cooperative ecosystem here in DC. And that continues to this day, and it's one that you can be a part of if you want to. And the reason the cooperatives matter so much is because they're a different way of thinking about how to participate in the economy. Cooperatives are businesses, unless they choose to be a nonprofit. And in many senses, they're just like any other business. But the difference is, and, and you can name some of them, and, and Jennifer and Harold and other people who are here today can tell you a lot more about those differences as well. But a lot of it is about who makes decisions in the business or the nonprofit and who receives the economic rewards. And so in a cooperative, if it is more democratically run, more people are making decisions. Those decisions better fit what everyone is looking for and more people share in the economic rewards. There are other reasons that cooperatives are also really valuable as well. And that is because they help smaller actors. That means um, entities, whether they are workers or smaller businesses or consumers get to economies of scale. And so if you were trying to do something that is easier for a larger business to do because it has more money, 
when you have the collective action of many people coming together, you can accomplish many of those things too. Sometimes that is access to a market. Sometimes that is the stability of your business model. Sometimes that is just the benefits that your workers might receive, um, whether that's as in terms of hours or you know, knowledge, training, other pieces like that. Cooperatives are an important part of our economy because they're another way for people to participate in our economy. And we want everyone to be able to participate in our economy in many different ways and the ways that suit them best. And we also are very interested in what does it mean for everyone in our economy to have an opportunity to build wealth and to take control of their destiny within the economy. Hello, everybody. My name is Jennifer Bryant, and I'm the program manager for community wealth building initiatives at WAKEF. I'm really, really excited and happy to welcome you today to the launch of the Greater Washington Center for Employee Ownership. Although we wish that we were in person, the pandemic continues. So we're very excited to be here with you virtually. Um, I want to thank Kate Miriam for that excellent welcome. The DC Department of Small and Local Business Development has been a vital partner um, in the development of employee ownership work over the last several years in DC. So again, my name is Jennifer Bryant. I'm the program manager for community wealth building initiatives at the Washington Area Community Investment Fund. We're really excited to launch the Greater Washington Center for Employee Ownership today. Um, the Greater Washington Center for Employee Ownership is made possible by the generous support of our founding sponsors, which include Kaiser Permanente, City Community Development, and the Employee Ownership Expansion Network. Before we jump into the mission, vision, and values of the Center for Employee Ownership, I want to talk a little bit about um, where we're coming from. As Kate mentioned, we have a long and rich history of employee ownership in Washington, D.C., going all the way back um, to the 1930s and before. Um, anyone that's been to Ward 7 has probably been up Nanny Helen Burroughs Avenue, and uh, many don't know that she was actually a cooperative pioneer. In the 1930s, during the Great Depression, she started the cooperative industries of DC with support from the New Deal. And she helped over 600 families um, in Ward 7 and Ward 8 to sustain themselves during that um, critical time. Fields of Plenty Food Co-op uh, was a co-op that existed in the 1970s. And it was really unique in that um, it was started by members of the Black and Latino community in DC. And in addition to being a food cooperative, they also hosted um, community events in the space where they talked about social movements and social issues. And then we have the contemporary example of some of the cooperatives that we have uh, in the city now including Dulce Hogar Cleaning Cooperative, which was launched in 2019 and incubated by the Beloved Community Incubator. We'll have Bianca from the Beloved Community Incubator speaking a little bit later, but um, I wanted to highlight these examples just to show that the Greater Washington Center for Employee Ownership isn't being created in a vacuum. It's building on this really rich history of cooperative economic development and employee ownership in our region. To extend that, um, we have an existing regional e ecosystem around employee ownership um, in the DC area. Um, we have technical assistance and capital providers. We have um, a whole host of clients who are seeking support, be they retiring business owners who are looking at employee ownership as a potential op exit option, um, startups, um, groups of people that are looking to start new exist, uh, employee-owned businesses, existing co-ops and ESOPs, and communities who are looking at employee ownership as a way to meet um, various needs around food, et cetera. We also have a, a whole host of local stakeholders, including the Department of Small and Local Business Development, the Washington DC Economic Partnership, the DC Co-op Stakeholders Group that Kate mentioned, the various community economic development law clinics at the universities, and a number of regional and national stakeholders who are looking to support this work in our region, including the Democracy at Work Institute, the Employee Ownership Expansion Network, and funders like Kaiser and City. And so there are all of these um, stakeholders in our regional ecosystem, and we're connected in various ways through the stakeholders group or um, through 
fellowship programs or organizing campaigns, but there was really no place that brought us all um, together. And so the Greater Washington Center for Employee Ownership seeks to be the central hub for employee ownership support and resources in our region. One common question is why WAKEF? Why are we leading this work? Well, in 1987, when WAKEF was first getting started as a community development financial institution, our very first loan was to the Pasadena Housing Cooperative. So cooperatives are in our DNA and employee ownership and economic democracy is part of our roots as a CDFI. In 2019, I joined WAKEF to lead the DC Employee Ownership Initiative, which was supported by city community development. And the goal of that initiative was to preserve legacy businesses and create new pathways to entrepreneurship through employee ownership. We're using the term employee ownership here to encompass all the forms of broad-based employee ownership, from worker-owned cooperatives to employee stock ownership plans to employee ownership trust. Um, a few years ago, through the DC Cooperative Stakeholders Group, we made a push and formed a steering committee to launch a cooperative development center. And I think that there still is space for a cooperative development center to exist. The reason why we selected the terminology employee ownership center, one was to um, situate ourselves within the broader national push for employee ownership centers around the country. Um, we're op doing this work alongside the North Carolina Center for Employee Ownership, the Minnesota Center for Employee Ownership, and others. But also to make the distinction that we're specifically um, serving employee-owned um, businesses. And so there are a number of cooperatives. DC has a huge number of housing cooperatives, but this work is specifically around employee ownership and building wealth through uh, employee ownership. So I just wanted to make the distinction about why we, we are using that terminology. Um, the work kind of has a four-pronged focus from conversions being uh, one of the primary areas of the work where we're supporting legacy business owners who are interested in transitioning their businesses to employee ownership, um, it, serving existing and emerging, emerging cooperatives by providing them with seed capital through the DC Co-op Impact Grant, and also connecting them with co-op specific technical assistance and resources. As Kate mentioned, ecosystem development is a huge part of this work. Um, we participated in the share, Shared Equity and Economic Development Fellowship with DC government, have been supportive of the DC Cooperative Stakeholders Group, and now are pulling all of those things together through the Center for Employee Ownership. The mission of the center is to promote and support employee ownership throughout the District of Columbia and surrounding counties in Maryland and Northern Virginia in order to preserve legacy businesses, increase job quality, and build community wealth. So again, this is a regional center to support DC, Maryland, and Northern Virginia. Um, and this is a photo of Roost DC. Um, at the event that we'll be having later this month on July 27th, Lisa Wise, who's pictured there, um, will be sharing about how she converted um, her property management company to employee ownership in DC. Who the center serves? Uh, we serve existing business owners who are interested in exploring conversion to employee ownership. We serve people who are interested in starting a new employee-owned businesses, and we serve existing employee-owned businesses. In order to launch the center, we formed an advisory council um, that includes Steve Storkin from the Employee Ownership Expansion Network. And Steve has been a really central figure in launching these centers nationally. Um, he's been an incredible um, resource on our advisory council to help us connect with um, technical assistance providers to um, enable us to facilitate the conversion of existing businesses to employee ownership. Allison Powers has been involved in um, the cooperative sector for um, years. Um, she works as a program manager at Capital Impact Partners where she leads Nourish DC and a number of other programs. She also um, helped to launch the DC Co-op Impact Grant, which is a partnership between WAKEF and Capital Impact Partners. 
Bianca Vasquez is the program director for the Beloved Community Incubator, and they've been doing a lot of work organizing um, cooperative businesses, helping to incubate them. They incubated Dulce Hugar, and they also um, are working to build a network of existing cooperative owned businesses and um, facilitate organizing campaigns. Kate Miriam, who we heard at the beginning, um, is at the Department of Small Local Business Development and has done so much to support employee ownership and small businesses in general in our region. We're really happy to have the support of local government as we launch the center. Todd Leverett is principal at APIS and Heritage um, and also works with the Democracy at Work Institute. And he's been very crucial in helping us think through how we can finance employee-owned businesses. So I invite you to visit the new GWCEO website, which you can find at gwceo.wakeif.org. Um, the photo on the front is of the community grocery co-op, um, which was they received the 2020 DC Co-op Impact Grant. But you'll see that um, on the website, you'll be able to view the services that we offer, including advisory services, uh, workshops and trainings, business financing, and our grant program. You'll also be able to view uh, videos and other resources about employee ownership under the resources tab. You can view our events and add events to the event calendar, and you can talk to a specialist. Um, this is the event page. You'll notice that um, we have our upcoming event listed here on um, employee ownership conversions, but on the right side, you'll you also have the opportunity to submit an event. So um, we really want the center, as I mentioned before, to be a hub for resources in our region and a way for all of the stakeholders who are doing work around employee ownership um, to amplify that work. And so if you are, have an employee owned event, if your co-op is doing an event, if you are a, uh, a, a organization that supports employee ownership and you want us to amplify our, your event, you can submit the event here and we'll include it on the employee ownership event calendar. One of the unique things about the Greater Washington Center for Employee Ownership is that we offer in-house business financing. Because WAKEF is a community development financial institution, we've been, um, financing small businesses in DC for more than DC, Maryland, and Virginia for more than 30 years. Um, and so you can visit our finance page under services and learn more about the loan products that we offer and complete the intake form if you are ready to access capital. And then lastly, um, if you are a business owner who's interested in converting your business to employee ownership, if you are an existing employee-owned business or you're interested in starting one in your community, you can click the Talk to a Specialist bus button to schedule a consultation. Those are the services that we offer. And if you're ready to get started, I invite you to complete the talk to a specialist or business financing intake forms on the website um, to add an event to our event calendar, to an attend an upcoming event, to partner on programming. Um, our event calendar, we're really centering partnership um, as an ecosystem organization. And so we're going to be doing partner events with um, the Beloved Community Incubator, with Project Equity, with the Democracy at Work Institute, with the Washington DC Economic Partnership. And we'd love to partner with your organization or business on an upcoming event. And so if you'd like to partner on programming, just complete the Contact Us form on the GWCEO website. And coming soon, we're gonna have a volunteer network and business directory. Um, and more information about that will um, be re released shortly. So sign up for the newsletter on our website if you'd like to learn more. As I mentioned, our next event is gonna be on July 27th at 1 p.m. 
It is an event in partnership with the Washington DC Economic Partnership, the Democracy at Work Institute and DSLBD. And we're gonna be releasing um, a DC employee ownership toolkit, which I think will be a very helpful um, PDF resource for um, business owners who are exploring um, conversion to employee ownership. And you can register for that event on the GW CEO website. Next, we'll go into a Q&A, but uh, again, this is the link to the website. This is the email address if you'd like to reach out and phone number. I also invite you to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. If you have a question, please drop it into the Q&A box. Um, and with that, I will stop sharing my screen. Um, I don't see any questions yet. So, Harold, if you are ready to go, please feel free to, uh... okay, I see you. There we go, all right. Uh, we had a little, little technical difficulties earlier, but thank you, Jen, um, and thank you everybody for attending. Uh, we are excited, um, as Jen mentioned, um, this, is, this has been a, a long time coming and certainly something that's been uh, in WAKEF's DNA um, to be a, a, a real ecosystem partner here to lift up the shared economy. Um, and we are excited uh, today to get this center launched um, and really to have it positioned for even greater partnerships with many of you that are here uh, participating on the call um, or to have services provided. Um, one way or another, we want you involved. Uh, with the center and we're we're certainly delighted uh, with Jen's leadership um, and that she's provided over the years just being a staple uh, not only here in the region but also as a staple leader here at WAKEF uh, really helping to shape the work to build the work um, and to partner with many of you uh, to make sure that we're, we're pursuing this the right way and so uh, I just wanted to be quick here um, uh, I know you know from Wake's from Wake's vantage point, we've been building a number of programs and supports uh, to further build the ecosystem here in DC, from capital to technical assistance um, and other partnerships uh, to make sure that the the programs, services, and access points to entrepreneurship are really here, uh, so that it could be fully experienced. Um, so thank you all. Um, I know we have a number of other speakers. Looking forward to uh, hearing from our other partners. Thank you, Jen. Thanks so much, Harold. Um, and with that, I'd like to turn it over to one of our advisory members, Allison Powers, with Capital Impact Partners. Hi there. Um, it says I, I can't start the video. Which okay, there it is. All right. Hi. Good to see all of you. Thanks for having me. Um, we're so excited about the launch of the center. I'll tell you a bit about Capital Impact and, and our work with co-ops. Um, we are a national, Capital Impact Partners is a national community development financial institution or CDFI, and we've always financed and supported cooperative development. Over the past 25 years, we've financed over 250 million in food, worker, and housing co-ops. And in 2020, we dispersed 10 million. We are a larger national CDFI focused in addition to co-ops on food access, aging, education, and affordable housing. We work nationally, but we have a focus where we have offices, including the DMV area. Uh, and we recently created a strategic alliance with CDC Small Business, who provides 504 and Community Advantage SBA loans. So we're excited to have a little bit more small business capacity. We've been working for many years to help build the national worker co-op ecosystem and have really seen conversions gaining traction over the past five to seven years. Uh, you know, for a lot of the reasons why uh, we're interested in it as our partners, the, the possibility of building wealth and creating assets, preserving quality jobs, increasing democratic ownership, creating more local sustainable economies. We're very excited that we did our first, financed our first worker uh, co-op conversion this year. That was Ward Lumber in New York. It is a 130 year old business that had been in 
the Ward family for several generations. Uh, it had two locations and it was really critical to the, the local economy in that part of New York. Um, it was over 50 workers, so kind of a larger worker co-op conversion. And uh, we were so, we're, we're looking forward to doing more and, and excited for, for this sort of growth in, in the DC area. Um, we did some extensive market research a few years back and found that the majority of healthy businesses in the markets we were serving would have no viable buyers once the owner retires. And if they close, those services and jobs will be lost. This, of course, has just been exacerbated by COVID and the economic crisis. So we really think that you know co-ops are having a moment right now. And as people are thinking of recovery and more equitable ways to structure the economy, uh, Capital Impact has been doing a co-op innovation award for the past seven years. And we've during that time, we've really seen an increase of this work around conversions and worker cooperatives. Um, an uptick in kind of a focus on culturally appropriate TA for different communities and engagement with, with local municipalities. And we're so excited that the DC ecosystem has been growing and, and is really seems committed to uh, building more cooperatives. As I'm sure everyone knows here, there's, and I'm sure it was talked about earlier, there's a long history of, of co-ops in DC. Um, and you know we've been working with housing co-ops for, for a while here and have been working with the Limited Equity Housing Task Force to encourage new, new legislation to both sustain existing housing co-ops and create new ones. And we hope that worker co-ops are similarly supported as a vehicle for ownership and wealth creation, especially as home ownership becomes increasingly out of reach in the district. Um, and we have been working with WACIF for the past two years on the DC Co-op Impact Grant, where we've dispersed $80,000 in grants to cooperatively owned businesses in the DMV led by people of color. And uh, we really, it was so exciting to see that, that you know, the number of applicants grow over the past two years and, uh, and just, that things are, are you know, activity is, is really increasing here. We're so excited for the launch of the Employee Ownership Center, uh, which we think will be a really critical asset to the region. We actually work with WACIF in several different capacities. They're a very trusted partner in our work in the, the DMV. We are also partner with them on the Entrepreneurs of Color Fund, which offers access to capital and small business advising to DMV area entrepreneurs of color. It was launched in February of 2019 and has deployed over $3.2 million. We will also be partnering with WACIF on the Nourish DC Collaborative. This is a $1 million effort that is part of LEAF or DC Local Equity and equity access and preservation funds. We hope the fund will be launched at the end of the summer or the beginning of the fall. And the purpose of Nourish DC is to support the development of a robust ecosystem of locally owned food businesses, especially in neighborhoods that have been underserved by grocery. This program is really focused on economic prosperity and job creation um, and locally owned food businesses owned or led by people of color. The Nourish DC program, like our work with the Michigan Good Food Fund, is a three-pronged approach to create impact. It will provide technical assistance, catalytic grants, and loans to emerging and existing locally owned DC food businesses. Capital Impact will be leading the collaborative, but we have um, amazing technical assistance and lender partners with deep expertise and community connections like WACIF and LEDC, Eats Place and Dreaming Out Loud. And the strength in this program is that we are all mission focused organizations but provide different level of, of financing and TA. So we can, between the collective, we can do a micro loan of $10,000 or a large grocery store for $5 million. Um, I think that's something that is is interesting to point out about this program is that co-ops are specifically called out as a type of business that is eligible for these funds. And we're also gonna be measuring how many co-ops are funded or supported through technical assistance as a metric for our success. Um, 
So this is, is really exciting because, you know, we have all these great advocates within local government that are also involved in Nourish DC. And as we see from other cities like New York, where there's been a large growth of worker co-ops, um, a lot of their goal has been an integration into local government and small business programs like this one. So we are uh, really exciting to work with WAKEF going forward on this and, and co-op activities and a lot of other things in the future and um, just excited to see what the next year will come. That's it. Thanks so much, Allison. Have I been muted the whole time? <laughs> Thank you, Allison. And with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Bianca, who is the program director at the Beloved Community Incubator. Um, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to share a little bit about BCI and our work, um, but I also want to also um, give Jennifer um, some praise for her commit consistent commitment to the development of the co-op ecosystem in the district. Um, so BCI uh, stands for Beloved Community Incubator. And we started as a small program out of Luther Place Memorial Church over in Ward 2. Um, we were doing deep neighborhood listening. And um, in the sort of in the wake of the 2016 election, and we were hearing from people over and over that their workplaces were a place of concern. They were experiencing wage theft and abuse um, at work. Um, and folks really shared that that had worsened in the wake of the 2016 election. And as a community decided we would sort of, without much uh, knowing how we were gonna do it, ask people, would you like to start your own business? What if you were in charge of your own schedule? What if you were in charge of your wages? And just that question was so powerful and really inspired a group of people to take action. And that's really how Beloved Community Incubator was born. And coming into the COVID pandemic, we thought we would be only an incubator for small projects that were coming out of BCI. And we were looking at industries that um, were heavily staffed by women, immigrants and people of color and paid low wages. Um, so we were looking and things that did not require a storefront because of some of the prices um, of real estate in DC. So we were looking at um, residential house cleaning. We were looking at home care. We were looking at stormwater maintenance. And then the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Um, and we had a question um, to ask ourselves if we were gonna stick to our own plan or if we were going to choose to dive into the broader ecosystem. And we did deep listening to every co-op and collective uh, that we could find in DC, Maryland and Northern Virginia. And outside of navigating COVID relief programs, we heard two things. Um, one was that people were very stressed about admin, that that was a constant stress that existed in their life as small business owners. And there, there wasn't financing for when they were getting started. Um, as we were listening in the process of starting our first co-ops, we also learned that a gap that existed in the ecosystem was for pre-launch support. What's so exciting to me about our partnership with WeGIF is the um, co-op impact grant where new and emerging businesses have the opportunity to receive funds. So BCI is actually working with, um, we've worked with a number of groups who have received the co-op impact grant. So that's a really powerful partnership. And what emerged out of COVID um, was or is the BCI network. And essentially this means that BCI can offer support primarily in four areas um, to co-ops that are new and emerging um, or have been operational for a long time. One is uh, accompaniment around governance. So it is a new way of being to not have necessarily have a hierarchical structure in which there's a boss. 
um, or where there's a more flat governance structure. We offer accompaniment and TA training around governance. Second piece was legal support. So many co-ops were overwhelmed with accessing legal services. So we help with things like writing your bylaws, legal compliance, um, incorporating is a common, um, a common service that we offer. Really what I would say is the cornerstone of what we've been up to personally is, is offering backend administrative support and particularly bookkeeping. Um, and so co-ops that are incubated by BCI receive two years of free backend admin and bookkeeping support and then step up in how much they pay for it. So Do So God, for example, is now in their third year of operations um, and are now paying 50% of their bookkeeping costs. So we subsidize some of those costs so that they have the opportunity to grow. And co-ops that are not incubated by BCI have the opportunity to become BCI members and receive subsidized bookkeeping administrative support and also get uh, prefer rates with preferred partners. So we've been building relationships with graphic designers and web developers in order to help people access marketing materials and websites. Our, our current projects, um, we're working with the DC, the DC Street Vendors Union um, we're also working to put together an interpreters co-op, and we're continuing to, to support Dusoga and Cleaning Cooperative and interested in uh, franchising that into Northern Virginia. One other thing that I just want to talk about, and Jennifer mentioned seed commons on in the sort of ecosystem map that was offered earlier in today's session. Uh, seed commons is a cooperative network that offers non-extractive financing to cooperatives specifically. And what's interesting about non-extractive financing is that um, co-ops have the opportunity to pay back their loan out of unencumbered profits. There is a very uh, established seed commons partner in Baltimore called uh, the Baltimore Roundtable for Economic Democracy. And there hasn't been a comparable um, peer or affiliate here in the DMV area. And so there is a local push to create a seed commons peer here in the DMV area, um, which, you know, just expands the array of financing that is available to small businesses and co-ops that are just starting. And particularly a seed commons peer could be an attractive option for small businesses that are led by immigrants, people of color, first-gen business owners that don't necessarily have access to generational wealth and need a really small loan, like in the realm of ten or $20,000. Um, so I share all of that to share that the growth in the ecosystem of the DMV over the past two years has been really pretty amazing. And I'm so excited to have a hub and a place where we can all be convened so that no matter where a business is in their life cycle, we have resources and opportunities to support them. Uh, so thank you so much for letting me share. Thanks so much, Bianca, and really excited about all the amazing work that you're doing with the beloved community incubator and look forward to continuing to partnering with you all um, going forward. Uh, I have two questions here. The first is from Rodney North. Hello, Rodney. Um, he asked, can you say more about what the center will offer regarding conversions to ESOPs and employee ownership trust? So um, yes. The center, similar to the other employee owner, the centers for employee ownership around the country, will help people transition to all forms of broad-based ownership, um, and will be convening a, a volunteer network of service providers. As I mentioned, that's one of the things that's coming down the pipeline. And Steve Storkin from the Employee Ownership Expansion Network is helping to pull that together. But essentially, how the process works is. We'll be doing workshops and events to connect with business owners who are interested in converting their business to employee ownership. And they will complete the intake form and we'll have an initial intake call with them and determine if they might be a good fit to explore this as an option. 
From there, we'll refer them out to our network of service providers to help them take um, the steps that they need to take to convert their business to employee ownership. So on um, our event with the Economic Partnership on July 27th, we'll be talking about what those steps are to convert your business to employee ownership. Um, and when we launch the volunteer network, you'll be able to view the service providers in the network um, who can help you convert either to worker, own, worker cooperative, an employee stock ownership plan, or an employee ownership trust. And so essentially the center will facilitate the connection um, of businesses interested in converting to service providers that specialize in ESOPs and employee ownership trusts. I hope that answers your question. There's another question here from Jim Schulman, who's with the Alliance for Regional Cooperation. Hi, Jim. Um, Jim says, will the Greater Washington Center for Employee Ownership assist housing cooperatives? And the answer to that is no. Our focus will be on uh, employee-owned businesses. So we're focusing on worker ownership either via a worker-owned cooperative, an employee stock ownership plan, or employee ownership trust. I think in terms of ecosystem development, though, there's so much that we can learn from housing cooperatives. And so through some of our partners, like the DC Cooperative Stakeholders Group, I think that that's one site where um, folks can connect from and learn from the housing co-op community. But the Greater Washington Center for Employee Ownership uh, won't be assisting housing cooperatives. If there are any other questions, um, please feel free to share them in the Q&A box. And before we wrap up the launch event, I just wanna say thank you again um, to all of our partners who helped make the Greater Washington Center for Employee Ownership possible. I wanna thank everyone who has been involved in the development of this ecosystem from people who are worker owners and members of cooperatives, people who have been involved in organizing campaigns, all of the formations that have come up over the years, Co-op DC to Cooperation DC, to the DC Cooperative Stakeholders Group and many more. I wanna thank all of you for um, making this center possible and Again, I invite you to reach out to partner on programming, to, um, to attend an upcoming event, to join us on July 27th for our employee ownership toolkit release, to join the newsletter for the new center via our website, gwceo.wakeif.org, and just generally to get involved in this work. And with that, uh, please feel free to contact us. There's one more question. And it says, for those people who do not have a direct stake, for example, small business owners or employee ownership service providers, what can they do to help this effort grow? That is a great question. Um, there are so many ways that you can support this work. One, you can amplify the programming and events that we have. You can um, amplify to folks in your network that the center exists. I think whenever you launch something new, the, the first big hurdle is just um, getting people to know that the thing exists. So amplification is definitely one. Um, something that a lot of people don't know, when we're giving out small business financing, individual investors can invest into community development financial institutions. So some of the money that we are loaning out comes from banks, it comes from our own um, loan reserves, but the funding also comes from private investors. And so if you're interested in investing in WAKEF um, so that we can distribute those funds to employee-owned businesses, use the contact form on our website. Um, I also encourage you to get involved with some of the um, local organizations, our partner organizations like the DC Cooperative Stakeholders Group. The next meeting will be in August and we'll be listing that on our event calendar, the Beloved Community Incubator. And stay tuned for more information about how to join the volunteer network um, if you're a service provider and, um, and the employee ownership directory 
um, where you can add your business to the directory. With that, I wanna thank you all for attending